Good afternoon, folks. The coronal mass ejection struck a few hours ago, half a day earlier than expected. The burst from the X-class solar flare, we knew it was coming. We knew to expect geomagnetic storms, but the severity of the impact was considerably more than most forecasters expected. If you recall, the most likely range of geomagnetic storm conditions was KP5-6, to 6, a level 1 or 2 storm. There was a real chance of a higher power event, almost 50%, and indeed, that is what we got. On the heels of the Corona hole stream we began taking this morning, the speed of the CME impact at 800 kilometers per second, luckily, the density was only modest. Nevertheless, the KP index hit 8, a severe geomagnetic event. If the density of the CME had been higher, we may have hit KP9, and then we'd really be rocking and rolling. The penetrating electric fields lit up the geoelectric like crazy for a while. We hit moderate to strong induction surging in the United States and Canada. The ground magnetic perturbations were also very strong, but luckily, those were largely isolated to the polar region. When the impact occurred, there was also a surge in ionospheric neutral density and a dropout of frequency usage capacity. At this point, there are already several small networks having issues. I will be monitoring various vectors throughout the rest of the evening and tomorrow. The technological risk will exist for 48 hours after the geomagnetic storm subsides. There's already a bit of a dropout in the storm power, but reverberations are possible for the next day and a half. For now, I'm glad it was only a moderate density event that minor network issues are all we've had so far, and that the solar flaring has now dropped below the M-Class range. I will see you in the morning for the Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.